Hello everyone, Chris here, and this is going to be a build order video for a 28 plus 2 Cellstone 4TC on Arena. This is going to be an intermediate video, I'm going to take that into consideration, and I'm not going to do all too many things that someone with a lot of experience with this will be doing. And I'm also not going to be taking deer this game, so uh, if that's not really your thing, if you uh, don't usually take deer when it's quite far away, or if it's outside, you don't usually like to, then this will work for you. Of course, it's always better if you take deer. I'd always recommend it as a skill you do want to learn, but we're not going to be doing it in this video. As well as that, I'm going to be using Vietnamese as civilization with no noticeable economy bonus. And with that, I'm going to show you it can be done without deer with a generic eco civ. Civs like uh, Goths and Saracens, that kind of thing. You could definitely do this with very pretty much every civ. Although you really want to do it with civs where you are, for example, in an arena pocket and you want to go some very expensive units. Things like elephants. Elephants cost a lot, as we are Vietnam uh, Vietnamese, we'll plan to go those. Other civs like Goths, of course you want to 4TC as Goths, you want to get that large amount of eco very, very quickly. And with that, then you could just wreak havoc. There's other civs, Byzantines can go Cataphracts if it's appropriate. Saracens can go Mamluks, which do kill pretty much a lot of things. Um, other civs that do have noticeable eco, um, eco bonuses, you've got Aztecs, they could go Champion Siege Ondra, for example, quite an expensive combination. Most Siege Ondra civs, most Paladin civs, uh, yeah, hell of a lot of stuff. There's also Britons, Britons want to do it, of course you've got the cheaper TCs. And yeah, to not drag this out, there's just a variety of things you could do with this. This is going to be a long video, I'm going to sit and explain a lot of things, I'm going to pause occasionally just to talk about situations. But, aside from that, it should be pretty clear to follow. So, as you can see, there's a build order on screen. As I said, we're going to be using Vietnamese, so we're not going to be pushing deer. This does mean we're going to be going 5 on berries, which is actually, um... It's something you could do with most builds, actually, going 5 on berries. So, let's just dive into this, and I'll talk about nuances as we come across them. So we start with building our two uh, houses. And queuing up our villagers, of course, almost forgot there. Of course, want to check to make sure we don't have any outside sheep. A really simple tip is to just task waypoints, hold shift and right click. And then on the last point, don't hold shift. And you scout a decent portion of your base. It's not a great way of scouting, but it's a nice basic one. I was, for this video, I'm assuming you've watched my 27 plus 2 3TC boom video. It's fine if you haven't, but a lot of the things in there I do pull off in this one. So basically, just keep scouting around your base. This is basic arena stuff. Um, if you've watched my beginner's guide, you don't know why. So we got our 6 on sheep, now we're going to go for our 4 on wood. Make sure we always have one sheep under a TC. I'm not using my normal mouse setup, or keyboard setup for that matter, so um, if I do click a bit off, that's uh, pretty much my reason why. Just keep scouting a bit. We only really need our first 4 sheep and then we just need to find our boars. We already know one's there. And some extra sheep are there. Where are you going? So, our form wood. <laughs> Always make sure we've got villagers queued. An interesting micro tip is if you have a wood line like this, send your villagers so these ones here cut diagonally into it. So then you've got these four in a row. And that's a very efficient way to run your lumber camp. So we've got our foreign wood, we want one boar. We know one boar is there. These villagers don't know where they're going. Nothing outside, so we could go and uh, scout inside. Next villager will build a house. Mm. 
I'm just taking this one nice and relaxed. So that's not a great boar kill, we should have gone for that one a little bit earlier. But I'm really taking this one relaxed. So after we have the villager build the house, the next one goes to the boar, we want 8 on the boar. I like to assign these to the control group so I can jump to them. This villager that built the house then goes on to the mill. We need to force drop here. And the next villager after that goes to the berries. Start deleting some of the walls here. Force drop to make another villager. Keep an eye on the spore when it gets around 150 food. It's a good time to go and get the next spore. If it's far away, 160 food. If it's quite close, 120 is okay. Gonna add force drop to keep making villages here. So when we get towards the fourth villager, we want to build a couple of um, extra houses. Around 17 pop. And after you have your four on berries, including the one that's building the two houses, then you could just assign them to the boar, the next few villagers you create. We want to get to 19 population with four on berries and having lured both our boars in. And any extra, go help on the boar. So now we have 19 pop, we want to consider a second wood line. Down here is not ideal, but it's going to be okay. This villager finished building the house. This is the point where I move one to berries. Of course, you could incorporate into the build order, so instead of one extra to the um, the boar, you can just move him to uh, berries. Around 19, 20 pop is when I like to add a couple of farms. I usually pick my weaker villagers and build on this side of the TC. They work a little bit better that way. Gotta make sure our woodcutters are working efficiently still. So this is great, we have an extra gold here. That's very good to TC later on. It's better to have two golds to TC, including your main one. Make sure these villagers are constantly on the sheep. Around 23 pop is when I like to make sure I have two farms extra, so four farms. With 5 on berries, without deer, with this build, I am looking towards having 7 farms. So 4 in this lumber camp, 4 in this lumber camp, now we're going to add 1 more to each. Because we're not building anything right now, we're just waiting for 5 here, 5 here, we can afford to make some farms with our wood. Because now we have 10 on wood, so even if we had no wood at all right now, We'd be able to afford a camp if we sent villagers to make one. Now, in the past couple of villagers, if you have a really good wood bonus, then you can just take one away from wood and you could 27 plus 2 this one. It's quite good to do it that way if you have a very good save Aztecs, I do enjoy doing this with. If you have a food bonus, well, what we're about to do right now is send one villager to straggle 10 gold. So we're going to send a villager, collects 10 gold without building a mining camp. This will become quite important later on. This villager will then go on to build a farm. But we don't really need it. We can classify this as one of our wood villagers as well. So we could have 24 pop right now, only 4 on this lumber camp. And the fifth one struggles 10 gold and then later after it does that goes to this wood line. That way we could 27 plus 2 but to keep it simple we're going to 28 plus 2. And it's quite a good economy, you're not going to be that far behind a person executing a good twenty, a good 4 TC boom perfectly. This is going to be quite good for intermediate, I believe. AI is just over here. We're not going to pay too much attention to scouting or the AI. Because it's an AI. This villager is going to collect this. Next two villagers will go to stone. This is how we're going to sell stone at the same time as be able to afford to build an extra 3 TCs instead of just 2. I have the feeling that villager is going to get trapped, I always get a bit uh, scared of that happening. 
I will want to TC the stone later. It's always good to TC the stone that you're taking, I feel. So we're about to hit 28. And we click up. If you are in a team game, it's unlikely you are going to be the first person to sell your stone to be able to afford to click up. Stone sells for 91 for civs that aren't Saracens. If you're at 6, it doesn't matter because you have bonus gold anyway. But, um... Of course, um, I did mention a six earlier, but I just forgot that they have the bonus gold, so they don't need to even struggle ten gold. But it sells for ninety one. If someone beats you two, it only sells for eighty nine. So you should always collect twenty gold with the Stragglerville rather than just ten if you're in a team game. But we're collecting ten here because I don't think the AI is going to beat us to it. As I said, this is a great team game strategy. It's not ideal for one v ones. So we want to have our seven farms. By the time we click up, these two guys mining well. These five over here on wood. These five down here on wood on the second lumber camp. And five on berries. Always good to make sure your villagers are working as efficiently as possible. You have a lot of free time right now, really. You could be scouting, you could be in a scout fight. But compared to your Dark Age, this is quite a bit of free time, really. this you could be scouting for the enemies forward whatever but we're gonna wait till feudal age really you can scout up against this walls but it's better when you're in feudal age to scout the walls and then you get to see a bit further inside this is brute, uh, barbarian on easiest so it's not gonna provide any opposition when they've done collecting from the sheep let's send them to collect the struggler i like to add farms in feudal age for uh, going to castle age it just gives you that much extra bonus food so now we're about to hit Feudal Age, we want to build a market and a blacksmith. Queue your two villagers, build your market and build your blacksmith. You can build these in better locations than that. These two villagers will go to wood. And we could always add a farm there. Eight farms is really good. It gives you a really healthy economy. If you think someone is going to be beating you, like if someone FCs at the exact same time as you, and you think they're going to 4 TC, like an enemy pocket in a 3v3 for example, then you can send 3 villagers. Anyway, sell one, sell 100 stone for 91 gold, and then you can afford to click up. <laughs> Keep mashing the idleville key, make sure you don't, whenever you build stuff, leave villagers sitting around. It happens to all of us. Double bit axe as soon as possible. I want to get horse collar as soon as we can as well. For these villagers, we want to get them eventually over to a lumber camp. Here we're going to send them over to this lumber camp, that way we can use a couple of villagers to build a TC on this gold. These two villagers will build a TC on this stone. We're going to create some villagers, we're going to send them to a lumber camp, we don't need gold right away. And this is going to be in steps, we're going to 3 TC. With the economy to build four, we're basically going to build the farms to sustain three TCs. And then we're going to build a fourth TC. So it's with a lot of civs you could do four TC builds where you build all extra three TCs right away, you have four. But that's not going to be the case right now, we're going to keep it nice and simple. It's always nice to build the occasional house. We can scout the map, scout for relics, whatever. You don't want to leave little edges hanging around the place. So we have a lot of wood. Something we could do is we could add some extra farms. We don't want to add too many though because we have we need about 550 wood to build our two TCs right off the bat. But we do also need a bit of extra wood to get some of the upgrades we're going to get. And the reason we get these upgrades is because they're just very useful. Okay, so we're about to hit Castle Age. When we do, first things first, start building the two TCs. We want the Lumber Camp upgrade and then Heavy Plow as soon as possible. Which should be pretty much right away with this build. After creating the first villager from the TC, we'll then get Wheelbarrow. This is um similar to Arabia where someone gives you a good benchmark of saying like 14 farmers is a good time to get it. 
doesn't really matter that much in Arena, but you're going to be slamming down the farm, so while you're getting Wheelbarrow, it's not that bad of an idea. So, let's get on with this. Create our villager. We want to build one on our stone. We want to build one on our main gold. Get bow saw. Get heavy plow. We can afford to reseed that farm. And we can reseed that farm as well. Now we want to get... Um, slip my mind that is called wheelbarrow. A little bit late on wood, but that happens. Just a couple of villagers not dropping off. You know, our villagers holding it rather than depositing it. Two villagers is enough to be building these TCs, but you could build them faster. I've always liked to build TCs with two villagers because three compared to two is quite insignificant. We have a lot of farmers already. We have 14. We're looking for just four more. And we'll start being able to build our next town center. We're also going to have some farms expiring, so... 18 is my goal, essentially. I've been doing this build, which does occasionally happen. When your TC is built, queue up villagers. 18 farmers is a really good goal to make sure that you could afford to run your town centers. I also believe I read Lumberjacks as farmers for a second there. That one's my bad. Any villager created, you send to make a farm really quickly. Although I do like to keep the villagers pumping to the lumber camp. We have enough farmers now. We have 18 and a few builders, so we're going to have some more farmers. So we could actually just sit on this number right now as we wait for wood to build up to build our next town center, which will be here. Just keep checking on everything, keep your TCs running. Every time you get 150 food, for example, is a good time where you could just cycle through your TCs, drop a few villagers in each. We can almost afford to build our next TC. We want to build this one with quite a few villagers. This is a really important thing. If you do not have a second gold, then your TC up here on gold, you don't really want to be taking villagers off it. You want to keep your villagers not making farms, but going straight to taking gold. You're going to need quite a bit of gold. If you have a second TC, but one of your extra TCs is on a second gold, so you've got your main gold and a second gold, and you don't really need to do this because it's really quick to just pump out villagers on both golds, get a lot of gold quickly to up. Just an important no side note on that one. But we have a lot of upgrades. We have our wheelbarrow already. We already have our all our farms here are getting heavy plow. And of course we have the wood upgrade right away as well. It's not a great farm placement, but it is a farm placement. That's a farmer. We don't really need wood here. We don't, of course, need to be getting wood at all, really. Uh, stone, sorry. My mind is getting all confused at the moment. This one we could also afford to send to wood. As you can see, we're getting quite a lot of food. And we could actually afford to get quite an early hand cart. That is a massive boost to our economy. The AI isn't up yet, that's why it's not taking relics. It's still in Dark Age. I didn't know Easiest Barbarian was more than easiest. 
Now we want to start getting our gold. We're at 22 minutes. We are absolutely booming with the farms. We're looking for... Like, 30 is a good point to then start considering uh, build my upbuildings, but you're going to want to still add your buildings after that, of course. You know, keep adding farms. Ant cart with 30 um, farms is really good for being quite early. So now we want to consider... It's now 23 minutes. We want to consider adding our extra buildings. I want to re um, replenish this lumber camp. But it's probably better if I just... Save and build a building right now. We're gonna want to up with a university because, of course, we've enemies. We want to get bombard cannons. They'll go quite well with our. Um, could afford not to build a house with our elephants. It's not something you want to be doing in a team game, though. You want to have your um, your flank making siege in that case. It's really expensive to get chemistry at the same time as trying to get elephants up and running. We're running out of farm space around our TC, so it's going to be fair enough to just build a mill over here. So we're getting quite a lot of gold in, which is good. And we should be able to click up quite soon. Farm wise, 34, a bit low, but I have four more. So, not going to be complaining too much about that one. We're also going to want to decide what town center we're going to be using to up to Imperial Age. This one of gold, a little bit important, we do want some gold. We're going to want stone because we want our unique tech, we also want conscription. And this one is the main gold, which is kind of going a bit pear shaped at the moment. So, we're going to use this one. We can afford to click up now, but we're going to just wait until this villager is complete, just for reasons. <laughs> Make sure to keep all your TCs running. Now don't think that you're through the goalpost yet. Now you want to start getting your upgrades for your units. Gold mining is quite good to get early. I'm getting it now, but you could actually get it during your time you're upping. But we did, as I said, we had two golds in our base that we could TC. Elephants, I'm probably going to want only 5 stables right away. We're going to spend essentially all our resources on Elite Battle Elephant anyway. It's a really expensive upgrade, so... Unlike um, Paladin, Paladin is expensive, but getting Cavalier first does give you quite a bit of time to just mass some resources. We want to get Chain Barding Armor. If you're VS, a lot of civs, especially if you want to fight onto castles with Elephants. We're also going to get Loom now because we have villagers outside. That's more than enough villagers on stone. Just to build one castle to get a few vital upgrades. Make sure all your resource collection buildings you have the upgrades you want. We don't need stone as I said so we're not going to be getting that. When our stables are, we're going to get things like... Uh, bloodlines. Just thinking uh, the enemies, they don't have... They don't have a husbandry, which is not ideal. You can mass knights as you go up. Elephants not so much, they are pretty expensive. Make sure, I mean it's minute 28 and we already have 110 villagers. That's um, definitely a very good benchmark to set yourself by. We're going to want a couple of these. But it's going to take a while for us to research chemistry, and it's going to be hard for us to even afford that. Elite Battle Elephant coming in. So we hit Imp just before minute 29. We have 115 villagers. Our economy is looking pretty good. 28 gold miners. Not quite enough yet. 40 farmers is decent. It's not going to support many elephants. I just realized this hotkey is not uh, ideal. If you have a lot of gold, which I can say we do, you can buy a bit of food, especially if you need to get upgrades. We're going to build this castle defensively. 
it's not all too important. We have a lot of uh, wood, so then we can take villagers off that. Turn into farms. Sort this stuff out. Okay, so now we're looking pretty solid economy wise. We do have approximately 120 villagers, but we do want a little bit more. Make sure you keep hitting your idle Vilki, you may have a lot of idols by now. Minute 32, we have a lead battle elephant. Quite a few of them, more coming out. It's also fine to use the market. If you're first to use the market, then all the credit to you. We're just waiting for chemistry to kick in now. I should also point out I've been trying to save a lot of wood for the bomber cannons, but uh, I would say I definitely overdid it. We're going to control group our siege workshops and our stables. Probably still a little bit on the underboom side. We're going to want that, ch um, I don't know how it's spelled, chatters tech. We're out on the map, we have a lot of um, army out there, we have more than the enemy, so we're free to build out there. I like to always overbuild farms, overbuild houses, sorry. But yeah, that's basically it. That's just a quick demonstration of how to handle or TC booming. Not very well. <laughs> the reason I was sliding the wood was for the siege, but I would definitely recommend if you were, of course, not in a 1v1 scenario or relying too much on it, if you had a flank that had decent siege. Maybe if you're a Khmer or something, this might be a good idea to have extra siege workshops and use siege rams if your flank doesn't have them, but they'd be quite useful for them. But generally, you would be spending that wood on extra farms, you would get more elephants and more paladins, yada yada yada. But this is basically it for now, 13 minutes, we have this many battle elephants. Our economy is pretty solid. 21, 2 siege, 23, 150, 136 villagers. Or we could just check the achievements with the vill high. And yeah, these are almost fully upgraded. We just need the attack upgrades, the most important ones are defense upgrades. And of course the unique tech, but that comes quite soon. But this is just a generic application. Goths is probably, you know, something you might be more familiar with this with. But yeah, hopefully this works and applies to you. So this has been a long video, I've been trying to explain quite a lot. Probably various things I've missed. I would also recommend if there's anything in this video you don't understand, maybe little micro tips or nuances you've seen me do but don't quite understand. I cover them in my beginner 28 plus 2 FC tutorial, as well as get into the more in-depth stuff in my 3 TC boom tutorial, which I think you would be a bit better off watching. The 27 plus 2, if you haven't already and you're struggling with your booming. So, I hope this definitely helps you. Let's take a quick look at the achievements. I usually forget to do this at the end of my videos. 136 fill high. This is probably adequate if you're going elephants. If you're going paladins, this is also okay. You'll probably want to switch to trade quite soon and you're obviously going to be deleting villagers, but as a good start, that's quite good. Also, you might not always get trade up and running, so it's always good to have a slight overboom in villagers. If you're going for a trash army, of course, if you're goths or something, then something like 120 villas is more appropriate. 110 if you're something like, um, you're not doing anything too expensive as goths, you know, if you're going full trash or something. Byzantines, this could also apply for if you're not going cataphracts. These times are of course a little bit late, I did have quite a bit of idle time. But that was just me being me, oh, five seconds apparently. Or 15 seconds actually. But yeah, this is a decent imperial age time, any time in the 29 minute mark before 30 is generally quite decent. And the resources collected are generally huge.
course, only 23 elephants by this point. But this is just a demonstration, and it's also included, you know, had to fall through a siege. If you don't have to do that, your resources are going to be a lot more. I would just recommend you keep an eye on them. Make sure you're not flowing too much wood. Make sure you're getting a bunch of farms out if you need them. And of course, if you have outside golds, then your main golds might be getting a bit crowded. You could always grab off some villagers off there, grab some villagers off wood, build some outside mining camps. You're going to be taking a lot of ground, so make sure you're sending forwards. You're building forwards. If you're safe like the enemies with bombard towers, you could also include those in. But that's a whole mess of strategy for another day. So hopefully you learned something from this. Thanks for watching.